Hey Agape and friends, thanks for joining us for our weekend service. I'm especially excited for today because we are beginning a new series called Now What? The Holy Spirit from Creation to Now and Why It Matters. Looking forward to hearing that first message from Pastor Dave in a little bit here. Before we get to that, I have a few reminders for us. The first is that we are continuing to do our food pantry during this time. That's on the last Wednesday of every month. So that's coming up in just a couple of weeks here. And we uh, need no donations for that. So uh, the next two Wednesdays, the church office will be open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you're able to donate any items for the pantry, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, if you're not able to go out but would still like to support the food pantry, you can do that with a gift. Uh, if you go online uh, to our giving page, you can see that one of the options uh, to give is the food pantry. So you're able to give that way. Speaking of giving, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you who have been able to continue to give of your tithes and offerings during this time and continuing to support the ministry. We really do appreciate it. And we also want to remind you that there are three ways that you can give. You can either mail in checks, you can uh, go to our website uh, to the donate page, or you can text to give. Uh, once again, thank you to everyone who has been able to give during this time. Now we're going to switch over to worship. Thank you to Darren and Al who were able to record some worship songs for us this week. So let's join together in one voice and worship our Lord now. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake Until I lay my head I will see Of the goodness of God All my life you have been
in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for your word. And thank you that we can still gather around your word and celebrate your word from all different places today. We invite you into this time now, Jesus, to move in our hearts and our minds and use your word to move us, to change us, to transform us. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. And we're beginning a new series today called Now What? The Holy Spirit from creation until now and why it matters. So starting today, we're going to look at the role of the Holy Spirit throughout history from, from creation today. And then, and then we're going to look at the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And then we're going to look at the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of Christ in the early church. And then moving through to now, to today. You know, as we roll out of Resurrection Sunday and still find ourselves in a place of uncertainty in this world, we might be asking ourselves that very question, right? Now what? Now what? What, what do we do now? We're probably not a lot unlike the followers of Jesus in that first century. After seeing his resurrection after the crucifixion, and, and then he spends that little bit of time with them before the ascension, and they just have to be wondering, now what? Well, as we read through the Gospels, particularly John 14 through 16, in the first chapter of Acts, we know that God already had a plan all along for his people. Remember last week when we looked at Jesus' words on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we talked about Jesus wasn't asking this question wondering if God had a plan. He knew all that God was going to accomplish and do. And we learned that, in fact, Jesus was forsaken by the Father on the cross so that we wouldn't have to be forsaken. And now, as we find ourselves in this very strange time in history, I believe that, that God is wanting to remind us and, and that we can know for certain as his people that he is active and present and that we are not forsaken. In fact, in John 14, when Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to his disciples, he tells them this. Earlier in the chapter, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. And then picking up in verse 25 of John 14, he says, All this I have spoken while I'm still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, and I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. We're not left as orphans, friends. Jesus sent us the greatest gift he possibly could give us for times like this. The Comforter, the peace of God, the Holy Spirit. So that we can truly say that our hearts are not troubled. So that we can truly say in day-to-day -day life that we are not afraid. We don't have to be troubled or afraid in this world. What if I told you that in the past month, I've had an incredibly, actually an incredibly sweet time with the Lord what if I told you that I'm experiencing a peace that, that goes beyond even my own understanding of why I should be experiencing it? What if I told you that I've had these unexpected moments of just overwhelming joy well up in my heart and in my mind? And like for you, this month has not been easy for me. It hasn't been easy for a lot of us. It's been full of stresses and, and disappointments and challenges and definitely had its share of uncertainty. So I can only attribute this peace, this joy, this comfort, this intimacy with the Lord to one thing. 
It's the fact that the Spirit of God resides in me. I'm so thankful for that. God's plan in the first century was to send his disciples the Holy Spirit. And today, in the middle of this now what time, I believe it is incredibly important that the church comes to a place of absolute dependence on God in her life. We said from the beginning of this whole ordeal that we believe that this is a time that God wants our attention. We believe it's a time for the church to seek God like never before. And, and we believe it's a time that the church should actually shine. And we will not be able to do any of this without the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. Well, the Holy Spirit, obviously the third person of the Trinity, is co-equal, though, with the Father and with the Son. But somehow, in some way, and it's been like this throughout history, the Holy Spirit is often overlooked and even misunderstood. Francis Chan wrote an excellent book called Forgotten God that I would recommend. And in it, he talks about that very dynamic, that, that the Holy Spirit somehow gets overlooked by much of the church. That the Holy Spirit is, is misunderstood, that the Holy Spirit is, is, is not functioning the way that we expect him to function. Now, we might think in our own tradition at Agape, we might think that, well, you know, we've got this charismatic tradition and that we're somehow exempt from overlooking or misunderstanding the Holy Spirit and his work. But that's not true. We can miss it. We can misunderstand the Holy Spirit. And in regards to his function and work, we can get it wrong sometimes. It's important that we understand that, that we need to seek the Holy Spirit and, and, and seek him in health and understanding just like anybody else. It's been such a blessing for me to see us move uh, in, in uh, concert with other churches in our community as we do uh, the work of the kingdom throughout Kalamazoo and the surrounding areas. And it's been a blessing to me to see how the Holy Spirit works differently in different churches. And, and it's been incredibly awesome to see even some of our more traditional brothers and sisters in the Lord kind of be more open to the work of the Holy Spirit in the times that we're living in. It's very exciting. There seems to be this renewed openness to the work of the Holy Spirit. So as a church with a more charismatic tradition, it would be so good for us to look at this topic of the Holy Spirit and be ready to lead and bless and move as we join other churches in ministry in the world that we live in and to be ourselves humbly dependent on God through the Holy Spirit. Well, let's begin at the beginning today. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit at creation. Now, we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he's dealt with us differently and functioned in a variety of ways towards us throughout history. And at every point, we will see that there are these eternal truths and these, these overarching themes woven throughout every move of the Holy Spirit. So today is the Holy Spirit at creation. Like I said, next week we're going to move and talk about the Holy Spirit through the rest of the Old Testament. Then the following week we're going to look at the Holy Spirit in the life of Christ, and then the Holy Spirit in the early church, and then move into the Holy Spirit for today. And we're actually probably going to spend a couple few weeks on talking about the Holy Spirit today, because I believe that it's super important that we just spend some really good time talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the church right now now. All of this is going to lead us up to Pentecost Sunday on May 31st. So I hope you're looking forward to it. I'm really excited. We started off by looking at Genesis 1 through 3. 1, 1 through 3. I'm just going to read that one more time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
Those words uh, for formless and void. Those Hebrew words are tohu and bohu. And they literally mean chaotic and empty. Chaotic and empty empty. So the earth was there, had been spoken into existence, but it had no order. It had no purpose. It had no life. And then it says, the word says, the Spirit of God then came and he hovered over the waters. The Spirit of God, literally the Ruach of Elohim. Now what's interesting here is Ruach is the singular word for spirit, and it's, it's, it's singular. But the Elohim, the word for God here, is plural. So the Ruach, singular, of Elohim, plural, Rachafed, hovered, hovered or fluttered over the waters. We see this idea of, of hovering and fluttering uh, a couple of other times in the Old Testament. In Exodus 19.4 and Deuteronomy 32.11. In Exodus it says this, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. So the Spirit of God is like an eagle hovering over its nest and, and drawing its chicks underneath its wings for covering. And like it says in John 1, it says that the Word was God and the Word was with God in the beginning and that all things that were made were made by the word of God, the word that became flesh, Jesus Christ. So, who created? Was it God the Father? Was it God the Son? Or was it God the Holy Spirit? Well, the answer is yes. Yes. You have God the Father bringing forth his divine will to create the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. The Son of God speaks forth the will and the word of the Father, and the Holy Spirit moves as the breath of God in power. The word and the breath of God move in unison with each other according to the will of the Father. Think about your own action of speaking. You can't speak without breathing. Go ahead and give, us, give yourself a second and try it. It's really difficult. You can't do it. You can't speak without breathing. In his book, Knowing the Holy Spirit Through the Old Testament, Chris Wright writes this, There is a close link throughout the Bible between the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Either or both together can speak of the powerful, creating, breathing Word of God. There are examples in Job and Psalms of where God, where the word and breath of God move together. So, back to tohu and bohu, chaotic and empty. Then God began, the world was in this state, chaotic and empty. Then God began to speak forth his word, and then the spirit of God began to brood, begin to flutter, hover over the waters, and they moved together. And the result is that then we see creation take place and, and what happens through creation. Things are brought out of chaos and into order. Things are no longer empty and meaningless. They all of a sudden have purpose. So the, the word of God comes forth and the spirit of God moves and they go from being chaotic and empty to ordered and purposeful. Where there was once nothing but complete, a complete uninhabited mess, God brings forth order and purpose through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 45, 18 says, For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and the earth and put everything into place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos, I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. Think about this in terms of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Before we accept Jesus into our hearts and lives, our lives are a desolate place of chaos and emptiness. And, and we can either, and we can try to bring about order and purpose in our lives on our own. In fact, uh, what, there, what, there's one of three things happen in the life of every person as we recognize our inherent emptiness and chaos. Because when we try to bring about purpose 
uh, on our own, we end up falling short. Three things happen in the life of every person as we recognize our inherent emptiness and chaos. One, we recognize the state of emptiness and chaos, and we set about trying to order it ourselves. We, we introduce all sorts of good works or education or success or schedules or acts of justice or fitness or whatever it is we can go after, all along not realizing that we are only creating a false sense of order that will neither satisfy or last and give us no hope for eternity. Or we try to disconnect from God from our need for God and the order and purpose in our lives. When we do this, we turn our backs on God and we walk down paths of hopelessness and destruction. We see life as just what it is without God, tohu and bohu, chaotic and empty. And we begin to embrace the things that lead only to more chaos and more emptiness, and we just follow that path to our own destruction. Or the third thing that we can do, we can recognize the chaos and emptiness in our lives without God. And even more importantly, we can uh, realize our inherent inability to fix it on our own. We humbly discover that we cannot order our lives in such a way to bring about satisfaction for what we're hungering and thirsting for. And we know that turning our backs on this will only lead to our destruction. So we invite Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit into our lives to bring about a sense of purpose and order. When the Holy Spirit moved on creation, he moved in power. And in that, he brought about order and purpose to everything that God spoke forth. We as Christians can still mess up this divine order, though. Instead of the will of God moving through the word of Jesus and into the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives in worship, we try to introduce our own priorities. You see, in creation, the work of the Holy Spirit pointed us to Jesus Christ and brought glory to God. That's how it went. But we can tend to have this mentality that the Spirit is going to do just what the Spirit is going to do. The crazier, the better. That the Spirit is out of control. The more chaotic, the better. But in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul reminds us that God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. God of peace. Anything the Holy Spirit does, one, remember, moves in symphony and harmony with the word of God, but two, brings glory to God. Everything that the Holy Spirit does, one, moves in symphony and harmony with the word of God, and two, brings glory to God. This is why moves of the Holy Spirit always have to be tested on these two criteria. It's the biblical pattern laid out from the creation of the world. So it's good for, it, it is good for us to simply respond to the presence and the creative work of the Holy Spirit instead of trying to generate it on our own. God was so good and faithful to send us the Holy Spirit. We only need to respond in faith and obedience. We're such a blessed people to have the Holy Spirit living and active in our life today. It hasn't always been like this. The function of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was a little bit different. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. But this week, I'd ask you, how are you going to use this time of emptiness and chaos? You know, as I, as I drove into the church today to prepare uh, to record this message, the streets are a lot emptier. The parking lots are a lot emptier. There just seems to be this emptiness going on. But as you look at the news and, and, and read online, and, and, and I try not to do that too much because what you see, it just seems like complete chaos at times. How, how will we use this time? of chaos and emptiness? Will we try to create our own sense of order and purpose and try to figure it out ourselves? 
when we rely too heavily on the government and the systems to try to figure this out for us? Or will you just give in to the chaos and the confusion and the, the emptiness and the disorder of this time and just let it wash over you and just give up? Or will you give yourself fully to God and what he has in store for you in this time? I guarantee, friends, God is going to use this time. And because God is good and loving, he won't waste this time in your life if you will only seek him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things, all of these needs, all of these things we worry about, they'll be added unto us. It's so important that in this time of chaos and emptiness, of now what thinking, that we live according to the Spirit of God. And that we trust and know that through the Spirit, God will bring about purpose and order to the chaos and emptiness in the world that we're facing right now. I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, to seek God like you've never sought Him before. He will use that time powerfully in your life. And He will show up with unexpected moments of joy. He will deliver much needed times of peace and comfort. He will bring understanding to things that, that maybe we don't have understanding for right now. I believe that this is a time for the church to shine. I'm so happy to be joined with you, brothers and sisters, and I hope that you will join me in seeking God together. Let me pray for us. Lord God, thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. And thank you that as we look at his role in creation, we saw that he brought about order to the chaos, purpose to the emptiness, and that we can reflect in this now what time in our lives and know that he can still do that through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our hearts. Lord, may we seek you and seek you with all of our hearts. Be with my friends this week. Provide for them. In, in their needs show up in unexpected, powerful ways. Lord, we continue to, to pray for healing over our, our world as we fight this virus. Lord, we pray for uh, all of the governing officials that are making decisions, and we pray for all of the frontline people, the medical workers, and everyone else that are, that are out uh, doing frontline work during this time. And we just ask that you just show us something amazing through it. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope to see you next week as we look at the role of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. God bless.